Welcome to the lecture for Basics of Biblical Hebrew, Chapter 1, The Hebrew Alphabet. In this lecture, we will cover the 23 consonants of the Hebrew alphabet. We will also cover the five consonants that have final forms. We will identify the six Begad Kafad consonants, the four and a half guttural consonants, and then we will discuss traditional versus modern pronunciation. The first thing to do is to take a look at the Hebrew alphabet. The Hebrew alphabet consists of 23 consonants written from right to left, and they appear on your screen in red. Before we read through this alphabet together, let me say three things about this alphabet that may be of interest to you. One, scholars are now suggesting that this may be the oldest alphabet in the history of the world, a gigantic advance in technology. Secondly, it is the oldest alphabet that is still in use today. And third, it is the alphabet that contains the language of the entire Hebrew Bible, and that Hebrew Bible constitutes over 75% of the Christian Bible. So if you want to study the Bible in the original language, you're going to want to love and learn the Hebrew alphabet. Let's say these letters together, working from right to left. There's no need to memorize anything at this point. Just follow along and repeat after me as we work through the 23 consonants of the Hebrew alphabet. Aleph, Beit, Gimel, Dalit, He, Wow, Zion, Chet, Tet, Yod, Kaf, Lamed, Mim, Nun, Samik, Ayin, Pe, Tzade, Kof, Resh, Sin, Shin, Tau. These are the 23 letters or consonants of the Hebrew alphabet. There are no vowels in this alphabet. We'll learn the vowel symbols in chapter two. Let's take a look at a chart that contains important information about the Hebrew alphabet. In the chart on your screen, you're gonna see the Hebrew letter, the name of that letter spelled in English, and the basic pronunciation value. What's important to understand is that the name of the letter will help you with the pronunciation. So keep that in mind as we're working through these names. Let's begin with Aleph. It's the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and it is silent in its pronunciation. Next is Beit, and it sounds like the B as in boy. Gimel sounds like the G in God. Dalit sounds like the D in day. Hey sounds like the H in hey. Wow sounds like the W in way. Zion sounds like the Z in the proper noun Zion. Chet sounds like the CH in the German word Bach, pronounced back in the throat with the guttural sound. Tet is one of the T sounds in Hebrew, and it sounds like the T in toy. Yod sounds like the Y in yes. Kaf is pronounced like the K in king. And Lamed is pronounced like the L in lion. You'll notice with most of these forms, the letter that begins the spelling of the name in English is the sound of that letter. Let's continue to see how that works. In the right-hand column, Mim sounds like the M in mother. Noon sounds like the N in now. Samic is one of the S sounds in Hebrew, and it sounds like the S in sin. Ayin like Aleph, is silent. And so we'll pronounce that with the vowel that appears with it, but we won't learn the vowels until chapter two. Pe sounds like the P in pastor. Tzade sounds like the TS in boots. Kof sounds like the K in king. The Kof and the Kof sound alike. Resh sounds like the R in run. Sin is another of the S sounds in Hebrew, and it sounds like the S in sin, just like Samic. 
Shin is another S sound. It looks exactly like the sin above, but it has a dot to the right to distinguish the sin from the shin. The shin with the dot on the right sounds like the SH in ship. And finally, the tau, one of the T sounds in Hebrew, it sounds like the T as in toy. Those are the 23 letters or consonants of the Hebrew alphabet. You'll need to memorize the form, the name, and the pronunciation for each letter. At the end of this lecture, we'll go over how to write or produce each of these forms written out by hand. In addition to the 23 forms of the Hebrew alphabet that we just learned, five of those forms have an additional or final form. The final form of the letter is the form that that letter takes on when it appears in the final position of the word, at the end of the word. In the examples in the right column, you will see the final form of each with other letters. So there is the noun derek. Because the cough appears at the end of the word, the final form is used. If it were to appear at the beginning or the middle of the word, it would take the regular form, cough. With the example am, because the mem appears at the end of the word, it appears as the final form and not the regular form that would appear at the beginning or middle of the word. Likewise, with the word zakain, because the noon appears at the end of the word, it also will take the final form. In the same way, kesif or eretz, because the pe and the tzare appear at the end of the word, it uses the final form and not the medial or irregular forms that we see with noon, pe, and tzare. You will have to memorize each of the five final forms and be able to identify the fact that each one is related to the regular form. At the end of this lecture, we'll go over how to draw or write the five final forms. Six of the letters in Hebrew have two possible pronunciations. There's a hard pronunciation and a soft pronunciation. These are the six Begad Kafad consonants. Now the word Begad Kafat is going to sound strange to you, and it is strange, it's a made up word. In fact, it's a mnemonic device. And a mnemonic device simply is a way of helping you to memorize which letters in the Hebrew alphabet are the Begad Kafat letters. If you say the word Begad Kafat, you'll recognize that the consonants in English are B, G, D, K, P, H, T, which relate to the Beit, Gimel, Dalit, Kaf, Pei, Tau in Hebrew. So if you can say Begad Kafat, you'll know which letters are the Begad Kafat letters. Let's look at those together on the screen. You'll see six sets of examples. In each set, there are two letters. The first letter, written with a dot. The second letter, written without a dot. The dot that appears in a Begad Kafat consonant to distinguish its pronunciation is called the Dagish Lene. The dogish lene appears in a Begad Kafad consonant when it's indicating the hard pronunciation. Now by hard, I mean that there's a full stop of air rather than air passing through the mouth to create the sound. Let's look at what I mean with the consonant bait. Bait with the dogish lene is pronounced with the hard B as in boy, b. But bait without the dogish lene is pronounced with the soft V as in vine. There's more air that passes through your mouth with the V. There's a hard stop with B. Because of that, they'll call these or distinguish these as a hard and soft pronunciation. Let's look at Gimel. The Gimel with the dogish lene is the hard G as in God, but the Gimel without the dogish lene is the softer G as the GH in aghast or maybe the G in giant. The Dalit with the Dagish Lene is pronounced with the hard D as in day. The Dalit without the Dagish Lene is the DH sound as in the. The cough with the Dagish Lene is the hard K sound as in king, but the cough without the Dagish Lene is pronounced as CH, like the German word Bach. The Pe with the Dagish Lene is the hard P as in pastor, but the Pe without the Dagish Lene Sounds like the PH in alphabet, or maybe F. The tau with the dogish lane is pronounced like the T in toy, but the tau without the dogish lane is the softer pronunciation, the TH in thin. 
you will need to memorize both the hard and the soft pronunciations for the Bagadgafat consonants. You'll also need to know that the hard sound is identified by the presence of a doggish lene. The doggish lene in the consonant identifies the hard sound of the Bagadgafat letter. In addition to five final forms and six Bagadgafat letters, Hebrew also has a group of consonants known as the guttural consonants. Hebrew has four guttural and one semi-guttural consonant. The four guttural consonants are Aleph, He, Chet, and Ayin. The one semi-guttural is Resh. For now, you don't need to know anything else about these consonants except that they are grouped together as gutturals. It will also be helpful to know that Aleph, He, Chet, and Ayin are full gutturals, but the Resh is the semi-guttural and later we'll learn some rules that apply to these guttural consonants. You'll understand that with any language, there are a variety of ways to pronounce the words in that language. Let's take English as an example. The pronunciation of English in America is different from the pronunciation of English in Australia, which is different from the pronunciation of English perhaps in Scotland or England. Pronunciation can change over time and pronunciation can change by geography. Now, when we're studying Biblical or Classical Hebrew, we're studying a very old form of the language. But there's also modern or Israeli Hebrew. And modern Israeli Hebrew is not necessarily pronounced as traditional Biblical Classical Hebrew was pronounced. So there are a number of different ways in which some of these words can be pronounced. Some professors and instructors will prefer a traditional pronunciation system, and some professors will prefer a modern pronunciation system. It really doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. In this grammar, we're gonna use the traditional or classical system of pronunciation. The reason for that is it's gonna make paradigm memorization and verse memorization easier. There's nothing wrong with the modern pronunciation. This is just the system that we're gonna use in this grammar. It's best just to use the system that the instructor uses and follow along in that case. Now, when it comes to the major differences between traditional and modern pronunciation, it's helped to know a few of the major changes. Let's consider these together. First, in the traditional pronunciation, the gimel is distinguished with a hard and soft pronunciation. In the modern pronunciation, whether it has the doggish line A or not, it's the hard G as in God. The same is true for Dalit and Tau. Whether it has the doggish line A or not, in the modern pronunciation, it's always pronounced with the hard sound, like the D in day or the T in toy. Finally, with regard to the consonant that we call wow, in modern Hebrew, it's called a vav and pronounced like the V in vine. This is perhaps the most significant change of all the changes that we see. Now again, it doesn't matter which system you use, just as long as you pick one and are consistent with it. In this grammar, we'll use the traditional system. Hi, my name is Aaron Eby and I'm going to show you how you can type in Hebrew using your Windows 10 computer. Uh, it's not that hard to do. Uh, we don't have to install any new software. We just have to use your configure your computer to use uh, the Hebrew keyboard. And so uh, there's nothing to install, no special hardware, no programs, just settings. Um, and I'll show you how to do that right now. So we'll go to the Start menu and go to Settings so that uh, we can install the Hebrew keyboard. We'll see the section called Time and Language, we'll choose that. Category Region and Language, choose that. And there's a section that conveniently says add a language to read and type in that language. Let's do that, add a language. We'll scroll through the available languages. They're in alphabetical order by their English name, so Hebrew will be with the H's. Click Hebrew. So now we have uh, Ivrit Hebrew added to our list of languages. We're not done. I want to change something about it. See, I want to use Hebrew letters, but also the diacritical marks, the vowels. I want to be able to type the vowels. And by default, that won't happen unless we make another change. So I'm going to click uh, on that uh, language and then choose Options. Um, now we have, you can see, the Hebrew standard keyboard uh, uh, added. The Hebrew standard keyboard does not include the vowels. So I want to be able to type in the vowels. I need a different keyboard. So I'm going to click 
add a keyboard and now you can see regular Hebrew without the standard is an, an option there I'll click that Hebrew right there so now I have Hebrew standard and Hebrew I don't need both of them so I will actually click Hebrew standard and remove that one now we just have Hebrew without standard and the benefit is that will allow us to type the vowels and other dots and things that uh, we need for Hebrew typing so that's good I can close the settings now and uh, you can see down in the bottom on my taskbar I have this now I have this uh, uh, box that says ENG that stands for English and this section here indicates then which language is being typed currently so if I click on it I have another option and I can choose Hebrew and now anything I type will be in the Hebrew language and you can see from the tooltip that I can switch easily with the keyboard by typing Windows key plus space so let's try it Windows key space switches to English Windows key space switches to Hebrew and another uh, uh, keyboard shortcut that I actually use more commonly I'm just used to it from earlier uh, settings is alt left shift and that also works just as well so that's the uh, that's the uh, setting that allows us to switch between one keyboard and the other so let's try <coughs> uh, typing some Hebrew now so I'll go to the start menu and I'll open Microsoft Word so here I am in Microsoft Word I can see that on the ribbon Microsoft Word automatically added for me a couple of buttons that indicate the direction of the paragraph um, and this is very important because if I'm typing a, a an English paragraph that maybe has a Hebrew word in it in general the flow of the paragraph is left to right and if I'm typing a, a, a fully Hebrew paragraph that could have a, an English word here and there the flow of that paragraph will be will be right to left generally and so I would choose the right to left direction and that's not just alignment um, if I choose a line right but I have the paragraph direction going left to right then the then the uh, punctuation marks will all be in the wrong place and the text will not flow correctly so it's let's switch it to a right to left paragraph so we can type Hebrew correctly um, and now I'm going to increase the the font size so you can just see it clearly and I'm just using the built-in fonts and things like that I'll now switch it to Hebrew and we can see that the text caret this cursor uh, added a little flag up the, to the top showing us that it's a right to left language we're typing in and it switched the font to Arial which contains all of the uh, Hebrew letters that we need Hebrew letters and symbols that we need and so that's uh, very convenient so let's try typing I just use my regular keyboard and uh, and I can type so let's type a word so here we have the word Shalom um, the letters are not where you would expect them phonetically so you have to get used to the way that the Hebrew keyboard is laid out for example the A is how I type the sheen um, not necessarily intuitive but uh, over time you'll get used to it and now to write the vowels it's a little tricky you have to know the steps you have to hold down well first you have to to have the caps lock on caps lock has to be on and then you hold shift and then press the numbers uh, up in the number row um, so if I want to make a sheen dot um, I'll move over to the left side of the sheen turn on caps lock and then hold shift and then for the sheen dot I have to press uh, the zero key so sheen or shift zero with the caps lock on now to make the kamatz vowel I have to hold you have to have caps lock on hold shift and press the number eight to make the column vowel I have to have caps lock on hold shift and press the uh, the minus key so here we have the word shalom um, and uh, with the vowels so now I'm going to show you a tip that will help you if you have a hard time remembering where these uh, letters are uh, and where the vowels are where the symbols are that you're looking for um, there's an on-screen keyboard option built right into Windows let me show you how that works go to the start menu go to settings and now find the ease of access section click that now find the category that says keyboard and click it and right up at the top it says on-screen keyboard the switch turns the on-screen keyboard on or off so let's click it and turn it on and on comes this on-screen keyboard and so this not only 
uh, shows us where the letters and symbols are. It also can be used as a, a keyboard, so you can type just like that, um, uh, which is also convenient. So we'll go. I'll switch back to Microsoft Word, and uh, say I want to con continue typing my my sentence. Um, we'll um, add a space, and uh, so I want to type an I in. So I turn the caps lock off, and then click the G, and then we want to add a vav. So we'll click the U. And I want a sheen dot, not a sheen dot, a holom, a holom dot. So I'll turn on caps lock, hold shift, and then the holom dot is here at the minus key. And then I want the lamid, so we'll turn off caps lock and do the K for kamats. Uh, caps lock on, shift on, and then the number 8. And then for a mem sofit, caps lock off and the letter O. And there we go, Shalom Olam. So I could, um, uh, I can, I can use this text to update my Facebook status. I can use this text as a tweet. I can copy and paste it to other programs. Um, it's actual Hebrew Unicode text. It's not uh, English that just happens to be using a Hebrew font. The computer knows that this is Hebrew, and it should transfer well to a lot of different programs. Um, and even if you, and if you have the uh, Hebrew spell checker installed as an option on Microsoft Word, it will actually tell you that this is spelled correctly or incorrectly. You can see that it, it realizes that I'm using Hebrew right here. Um, so that is how you type in Hebrew on Windows 10. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video and, uh, and uh, Shalom Olam.